We welcome you, Hope City, at home. Why don't you worship with us? Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Christ the
Christ was born. Oh, night divine. Oh, night, oh, night divine. City at home, thank you so much for joining us on Christmas Eve for a very special service. I hope as Christmas is almost upon us that you are enjoying time with your friends and your family and really time together right here as Hope City at home. I want to read a little bit of the Christmas story out of Matthew chapter 2. I'll read it for us together. It says, starting in verse 1, Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not the least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men and he Learn from them the time from when the star first appeared. Then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way. And the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. And went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with with joy they entered the house and saw the child with his mother mary and they bowed down and worshiped him then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts they gave him gifts of gold frankincense and myrrh when it was time to leave they returned to their own country by another route for god had warned them in a dream not to return to herod after the wise men were gone an angel of the lord appeared to joseph in a dream Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. The angel said, stay there until I tell you to return because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. Verse 11 says that when the wise men came into the presence of this newborn baby Jesus, they opened up their treasure chest and gave him gifts. You see, just for a few moments on Christmas Eve, I want to encourage us from this thought, the gifts we give, the gifts we give. Before we get any further, I know it's Christmas Eve, and I know you're at home as a part of Hope City at Home, but turn to somebody around you and tell them, you look good on Christmas Eve. Come on, you look good on Christmas Eve. You see, tomorrow is Christmas, and so many of us will be both giving and receiving gifts. Maybe you've already done that today. Maybe you're going to do that a little bit later. And a lot of you will do it tomorrow. You'll be both receiving and giving gifts. But on Christmas Eve, I don't want to talk about the gifts that we're going to receive or give um, to each other, those people in that room with you. I want to talk about the gifts we give Jesus. For Jesus is the reason for this season. You see, our text mentions wise men, these were magi or magi. It's where we get the word magician. They are mentioned all throughout the Old Testament and commonly in the book of Daniel. The father, the forefather of the magi was a man named Balaam. And four times Balaam is instructed by King Balak to prophesy against the nation of Israel. But listen to this. 
Each time he tries to prophesy harm to the nation of Israel, God fills his mouth and makes him prophesy a blessing over Israel instead of a curse. And the last time he prophesies that a star would signify the birth of a deliverer, a birth of a king. That's found in Numbers 24. So how did the Magi know about, how did they know to look for this star? They had their forefather, Balaam's prophetic word. So these wise men, they see the star and they follow the star from Persia all the way to Bethlehem. Most theologians believe this was about a thousand mile journey and it could have taken anywhere from six to nine months. That's a long time to follow a star, to find a king. And when they get to Jerusalem, they are told to go see King Herod. For Herod is looking for this newborn baby Jesus. He is jealous, I think, of all the attention that this baby is getting. And so he really has evil plans for Jesus. And so he summons these wise men to come and meet with him. And so the Magi, these wise men carrying gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. There were three gifts offered, but there were many more than three wise men. There weren't just three wise men. There was many more wise men carrying these three gifts. They come to the palace of Herod first, which means the gift that they would give King Jesus first stop at King Herod. Now, they didn't give those gifts, but Herod very well could have taken those gifts. And so if you're taking notes on this Christmas Eve, just real quick, I, I want to encourage you with this first, this first point. Write this down. Don't give your gifts to the wrong king. Don't give your gifts to the wrong king. You see, they could have given these gifts to King Herod. After all, he was the king of the land. Herod could have very well taken the gifts. But the wise men knew that this was not the king that was worthy of the gifts. They came to Jerusalem because it was the capital city. And undoubtedly, they could have offered up and probably should have offered up something to the king of that land. And yet they knew the gifts they carried, the gold, the frankincense, the myrrh, the gifts that they had were not for Herod. They were for another king. And I just want to encourage you, Hope City at home, don't give your gifts to the wrong king. You see, each and every one of us have gifts that God has given us, and it is our duty, our responsibility, really our joy to turn around and give those gifts back to the Lord, to steward what he's given us and return them to the Lord. You see, I'm not just talking about money or financial gifts. I'm talking about giftings. I'm talking about every good and perfect gift that God has given you. Some of that might be, you know, financial resource, but, but some of you have the gift of being um, joyful and, and having comedy. Some of you have the gift of being kind and knowing how to say the right thing at the right time. Some of you have the gift of compassion. Some of you have the gift of generosity. Some of you have the gift of, of serving. Some of you have multiple gifts. Some of you are great um, with, you know, musical instruments or singing or whatever the case may be. God has given each and every one of us gifts and giftings and it's our job to steward them and to one day, really every day, give them back to the Lord. So I want to encourage you, you have the right gift. You have the right giftings. Just make sure that the right gifts don't end up with the wrong king. We see this all the time, don't we? I think about great you know, singers who can just sing the paint off the walls. Like they can sing, sing. Not just sing, they can sing. And they're out there using their gift for the wrong king using their gift for the king of the world, using their gift for popularity and Instagram likes and follows, which in and of itself is not bad. But our gifts should not go to the wrong king. Our gifts, our giftings are not for a worldly king. They're not for Herod or the Herods of the world. They are for King Jesus. So I want to encourage you on Christmas Eve, when we're talking about the gifts we give Jesus, let's make sure we don't give our gifts to the wrong king. I wonder how many of us watching this Hope City at Home experience have been bringing our gifts to the wrong king, the kings of this world, the kings of, of things we thought would make us feel better, and yet they don't. Let's bring our gifts to King Jesus. You see, when the wise men leave Herod, they see the star again, and they follow 
this star until it stops over the place where the child was. And the Bible says that the wise men were overjoyed. And they go in carrying their gifts. These are the same gifts they just carried for the last six to nine months. They carried these gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh a thousand miles. It was a long time, a long trek. They were heavy. And the truth is, these gifts were not cheap. You see, number two, I want you to know, your gifts should cost you something. That if we're going to give gifts to a king, let's give gifts that are worth giving to a king. They have to be worthy of a king. I want to encourage you with, with Christ Jesus and King Jesus, let's not re-gift anything. Come on, some of y'all are about to receive a gift tonight. You're going to receive a gift tomorrow, and you're going to open it, and you're going to put on a good face, and you're going to say, oh, my gosh, thank you so much. I love it. I always wanted one of these, and you know good and well, the moment that person leaves, you're going to say, I wonder where they got this at because I'm about to take it back, or I'm going to re-gift it, and you know immediately there ain't no way I'm keeping this. I never want this. I'm going to re-gift this. You start thinking about parties you got coming up that where you can re-gift gift this. Come on, Jesus is not somebody that we re-gift something to. We, we don't take something out of a, I don't want this pile and bring it to Jesus. Jesus is a king that's worth our best gifts. You see, the wise men bring gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And each of these gifts not only cost them something, but each of these gifts were symbolic. They were even prophetic. They were powerful in their symbolism and in reality. You see, the first gift was gold. Gold was a common gift given to kings. It spoke of, of King Jesus' royalty, that he was the king of kings, that he's not just any king, he's the king of kings. They also gave frankincense. Frankincense was commonly used in ceremonial worship by priests. This did not just speak of his royalty, but frankincense spoke of his deity, that he would become our high priest, that we wouldn't have to wait once a year for the high priest to go in on the Day of Atonement, but Jesus Christ becomes, became, and will continue to become our high priest. They gave gold, frankincense, and they gave myrrh. Myrrh was commonly used as anointing oil and as an embalming oil in the preparation for burial. This was prophetic for Jesus' anointed ministry and the death of Jesus. You see, this did not speak of his royalty or his deity. This spoke of his humanity. This spoke of his office, not just as king or as priest, but as our prophet, the prophet of Israel. So gold, frankincense, and myrrh, royalty, deity, humanity, king, priest, prophet. But these gifts cost the wise men something. It's not truly a gift if it didn't cost you something to give it. True gift is sacrificial. True giving, true generosity is sacrificial. And I want to encourage you, when it comes to giving gifts to our king that we're celebrating on this night, Christmas Eve, let's continue as we close out 2020 and as we enter into a new year to give gifts that cost us something. The Bible says to live your life as a living sacrifice that it should cost us something. I'm not, once again, just talking about finances. I'm talking about our lives. I'm talking about every part of us. We should want to give the best of what we have back to the Lord. Number three, giving is an act of worship. Giving is an act of worship. Verse 11 says, they entered the house, speaking of the wise men, and they saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Watch how it's written. Then they opened up their treasure and gave gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You'll notice that worship is often connected to an act of giving. That giving is an act of worship. What does worship mean? Worship means worth-ship. We give gifts to Jesus because he's worthy to receive the gifts in the first place. You might be sitting there on this Christmas Eve saying, Pastor, but I don't have much to give. 
I don't have a bunch of money. I, I don't even have a bunch of time. I'm busy. Well, maybe the gift you can give is a hallelujah. Maybe it's a thank you, Jesus. Maybe it's a praise out of your mouth. Maybe, maybe it's a kind gesture for somebody else. Maybe, maybe the way you can give gifts to the Lord is showing the love of Jesus to other people in your world. Maybe it's buying somebody a cup of coffee. Maybe it's opening a door for somebody and, and smiling at them. Whatever it may be, we can still give whatever we have. Because it's not about equal amount in the kingdom. It's about equal sacrifice. And I want to encourage you to give gifts that are worthy of a king, but also remember that giving is an act of worship. We worship him because he's worthy of our worship. We worship him because he is the king of all kings. We worship him because he is, he is Emmanuel, God with us. We worship him because he is who he says he is, that he's wonderful, that he's a counselor, that he's a mighty God, that he's an everlasting father, that he's the prince of peace, that he's the king of kings, and he's the Lord of lords. We worship him because he's worthy of our worship. Herod's not worthy of the worship. The kings of the world are not worthy of the worship. Christmas is about a man named Jesus who was born in this season for you and for me. And let's worship him in everything we do. The Bible says in all that you do, do as unto the Lord. In other words, that everything we do from our conversations to our thoughts to how we interact and treat people should be speaking of how much we love Jesus and displaying his love for the world. The text says that when the wise men left the manger scene, they went another route. It says verbatim, when it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route. And here's what I want you to know. Spending time will, with Jesus will always change the way you leave. Spending time in his presence will always change you in such a way. When you leave, you say, I can't go back the same way that I came. I'm choosing a new way. I'm choosing a better way. I'm choosing a safer way. I'm choosing a way in which no harm will come to me because I've spent time with Jesus. Hope City at home, it's Christmas Eve. You're with your family. Maybe you're by yourself. Maybe you're traveling. Maybe you're watching this at a future time. I want to encourage you and remind you that Christmas, although it's filled with so many awesome things, it's really about one thing. His name is Jesus, that he was born in this earth for you and for me, that he could take our place, that we could come into saving faith with him. You see, he has a gift for you. It's a free gift. He's already paid for it. The gift is salvation. And so if you're not where you need to be in your relationship with Jesus right here as Hope City at home, I want to encourage you to, to give your life to Jesus. You see, the gift you can give in this moment is your attention is your sincere change of heart, is a decision in a made up mind saying, I'm gonna change the way I live and I'm gonna begin to live for Jesus. And he has this free gift of salvation that can come to you on that smartphone, on that tablet, on a TV screen, wherever and however you're watching this. If you accept the free gift, that could be the gift that you give back to Jesus right here in this moment. I just wanna pray for you. If you can, wherever you're watching this, if you could close your eyes, if you can't, maybe come back to this when you can. With every eye closed and you're not, if you're not where you need to be with Jesus and you wanna give your life to him or maybe give it back to him right here on Christmas Eve, what an awesome, awesome day and night to do that. If you're not where you need to be with Jesus, you don't have a personal relationship with him, on the count of three, if that's you, would you just even raise a hand where you're at? Or you could even type it in the chat, that's me. Come on, one, two, three. Somebody's typing, that's me right now. Somebody's lifting up a hand in a living room right now because it's all about a personal relationship with Jesus. 
Come on, let me pray for you. Dear Jesus, I thank you for every hand that was lifted. I thank you for everyone who put that's me in the chat. Lord, I thank you that even as a part of Hope City at Home, Lord, that you can touch people exactly where they're at, that you can move on their behalf, that people can feel your presence right there in a living room, in a car, in a bedroom, in a basement, wherever people are, Lord, that they can feel your presence right now. Lord, for everyone who raised their hand or wrote that's me in the chat, Lord, I pray, Lord, that they would come into saving faith with you. Lord, that they would accept you in their life as Lord and Savior. That they would repent of their sins and, and turn from anything that's not of you and begin to live for you. I thank you for the free gift of salvation. Lord, I pray you, you embolden us, give us the courage and the strength to continue to give gifts to you our entire life, really. Gifts that are worthy of a king because you're worth it all. We love you so much, Jesus. And everyone said a big, loud amen. Come on, let's clap our hands. Somebody put some hand emojis in the chat. Hey, Hope City at Home, I want to wish you, if you haven't heard it already, a very, very blessed, favored, and merry Christmas. We'll see you Sunday at 10 a.m. for our Sabbath Sunday, Hope City at Home. Otherwise, have a great Christmas. God bless.